Welcome to Electro Online. So in the last video we saw how, how optimistic Frank Drake was, the one that came up with the Drake equation. He estimated that there might be as many as millions of planets in our galaxy that had intelligent life capable of communicating with us via radio communication. But since then we've learned a lot. That was back in 1961 and now we realize that the possibility of life arising on a planet, even if all the conditions are just perfect, are probably very, very remote. And so new estimates that we then place into the Drake equation gives us a very different result. Let's take a look. First of all, the number of solar-like uh, stars that would form every year, we went from one per year to a more optimistic 1.5 to 3 per year. Isn't that a thousand? You're 100 again. Oh. All right. So, um, so we estimate that now we know that more solar-like stars form every year in the galaxy than we previously had estimated. And the fraction of those solar systems forming planets, when we set from 0.2 to 0.5 before, which was very optimistic back then, now we realize that almost every star in our galaxy seems to have planets around it, at least one planet. So, there we go. The fraction of those solar systems forming planets is probably much closer to 1 than it is to 0.2 to 0.5. So, so far, much more optimistic in our chances. But now things begin to change. When Drake estimated that from 1 to 5 planets around each star that, that, uh, around each star that formed planets were Earth-like planets, the estimate now went down to 10 to the minus 5. 1 in 100,000. Because now we've already discovered thousands of planets and not a single one appears to be Earth-like. There's one, maybe two, that might be a little bit kind of like the Earth, but truly like the Earth, the way it is with oceans and air, the way we have it today. We haven't found one yet, and the chance of one being found is much more remote now that we realize we have the technology to figure these things out, and so the probability has gone way down. And then, of those planets, the fraction of those planets where life actually arises, we begin to realize how almost miraculous it is that there's life on the Earth. We have no idea how it can start. It seems such an improbable event. So for those planets that are Earth-like, the chance of life actually evolving on those planets is, is also placed at a very, very, very tiny number. Now, of those planets where life evolves, and remember, we had three billion years of essentially microbial life, that that would then turn into intelligent life, the chances are, again, extremely remote. And then the fraction of those planets that have intelligent life on it, the fraction of those that would then develop radio technology, well, that would be pretty high because once there's intelligent life, we think it would be fairly reasonable that they would develop the kind of technology they can commu communicate with. But then another very pessimistic result. Once a civilization is capable of producing radio technology, they're also capable of producing chemical weapons, biological weapons, nuclear weapons, who knows what other weapons we're going to come up with. We have all kinds of ways of destroying ourselves and our planet. The estimation is that there's only about 300 years to go before we will annihilate ourselves. Well, hopefully we'll break that particular estimate. We will not annihilate ourselves in the next 300 years. But again, when you take these very pessimistic views on the probability of a planet existing in our galaxy that we'll be able to communicate with, well, it went down to 9.1 times 10 to the minus 13th. There's virtually no possibility of a planet being out there with, with intelligent beings capable of communicating with us. And if they're correct on these estimates, then we can say we're probably alone in our galaxy. And there wouldn't be very many places in our universe where intelligent be beings exist that could communicate with other intelligent beings. Hmm, that's a very different picture on the matter. But again, these are just theoretical estimates. It's probably somewhere between what Frank Drake taught in 1961 and these numbers right here, which are probably a little bit too pessimistic. Who knows? The key, I guess, is going to be figuring out 
how life began on the earth. Once we can figure that one out, once we can show how it, how it happened, and it seems reasonable to believe that this can happen on other planets, then we might have a much better estimate. But until we do, it's still a big mystery. So how many years have we had the radio? Since the 1950s. So 1950s is when we began with radio communication. So we haven't had it for that long. We've had it for 70 years. Yep. 70 so years. 30 years left to go. <laughs> yes. Imagine where we will be with our weapons technology in 230 years. And who will have those weapons? And how will we relate to one another in this world? At this point in time, it's not looking good. <laughs> yeah. We still need to learn how to live with each other, unfortunately. Yes, just look at us. 